Okay, he's already embarrassed himself, he's only made two speeches, but <laughs> keep trying, mate. All right, so, um, if you don't know, well, hopefully you do, uh, the Houston Sabre Cats are in town, and we're the, the town's first professional rugby team, which we're very excited about, and we're hoping you are too. <laughs> Why Houston have fallen in love with rugby? And that's not just the rugby community that's here today or that plays rugby weekly. That's beyond that. Houston is such a massive sports town. I mean, go Astros, right? Yeah. For reason. Um, but we wanted women to become part of the, the, the sports uh, landscape. And then the, the second one, that they go hand in hand, is growing the game. We wouldn't be in this room together if we didn't all believe that we need to grow the game and become a tier one nation that can compete with the best of them in the world. And America can do that. It's just going to take some time, it's going to take some grassroots efforts to get us there in the long run. But I don't want to get too political. Alright, so if we split this up into the how do we do this? With a team of Fitzy, Sam, um, and what we've been doing as players, we're trying to create a championship environment. And to do that, I'll explain how we've been doing it later, but that's what we want, a championship environment. Trophies, medals, all those things come a part of it. That's a result. That's not, that's not how we're doing it. We're trying to create the environment first so it lasts for years and years. The second one, um, as the academy, is to empower the rugby community. So we want to set up a program that caters for everyone. And as I go through, you'll see that. But not just players, coaches, parents, administrators. We have to do the whole thing if we want this game to grow together. Uh, the what? I'll just list these off really quickly um, and then we'll get into some more depth after this. But basically, with the team and the academy, you've got to have a vision. Now this vision uh, started, you know, I know it was over four years ago um, and our, our very generous and very proactive investment team has been very patient in waiting for the right time and that time is now. Um, we've got to, like I said, you've got to create the environment, you've got to provide structure for things to happen, then you've got to go out and recruit, and then you've got to go and compete. Now that's day to day, and then that's every Saturday on the pitch. Uh, with the academy, uh, I had to, have, had to have a vision in mind, and we've got that. I had to understand how the rugby landscape works, that's why I've spoken to so many of you um, over the last few months, as well as Fitzy and Sam. And the plan's together now, and now it's time for action. Now it's time to go and implement these things that we want to do. So, I've got to use two hands now, by the way. Okay, so, um, with the team. Now I'm just going to go over these briefly, because I'm sure you've all seen how a team works before, when I've only got five minutes, like I said. But, let's start with the vision. Like I said, four years ago, and we have an investment group that is willing to put us on the absolute forefront of American rugby and put us in a position to be the most successful we can be. So as players, we're exceptionally appreciative for that. And as a community, I think we should be too because they're the ones that are putting in their time and money to get us to, uh, to a position we need to be in. Um, the environment, now one thing I left off here is, is culture. And you've got to create that when you're, when you're putting together a team. And that goes hand in hand with the recruitment policy that we came up with uh, and the recruitment plan that we had. But you've got to get in players who want to be here for the right reasons. We don't want the flashy stars who want to take all the attention. It's got to be the people who are willing to put in the effort and the people who are willing to um, put the name on the front. It's more important than the name on the back, to, to use a cliche. Uh, putting together training plans, using professional facilities like um, the athletic training and health facility we use at the moment until our own one is built. Um, structure, obviously short term, medium and long term planning. So this is from your day to day activities down to the minute, to your season, to your five to ten year plans on, on what's meant to be happening. Because if you just go on short term, you're never going to have that long longevity. Uh, recruiting. This is I guess some of the exciting things that you've probably seen on our social media. Um, we have recruited what we believe is an outstanding caliber team. And like I said, not just with talent, but with personalities as well. And, and you can really feel that at training um, with the camaraderie that we've, we've got together now in such a short period of time. And just to rattle off a few names, uh, Osaya Kalini South, our Fijian sevens captain who won the gold medal. 
Uh, he's in town now training, great guy. Uh, all he cares about is growing the game of rugby. That's one of the reasons we wanted him. Uh, Charlie Hewitt's here today. He's the rather large gentleman uh, over there with the baby face. He's one of our second rowers. Uh, Sam Windsor's there with him as well, our uh, bats coach and uh, fly half. Um, Carl Sumption is just over there in the Saber Cats t-shirt. Just a, an outstanding player who, who Fitz and I and Sam knew that we wanted really early on. Um, and then, but they're people we brought in. The local people were important as, as well, because there's some players here outstanding. And one in particular, we call him Golden Boy, because I know he's, he's Houston's favorite son, he's, he's Connor Mills. He's, uh, he's an exceptional player, but he's also an exceptional person, and he's been really excelling in the, um, the preseason. And then, Young kids, and this is where it's going to lead on to the academy. Someone like Kieran Farmer. So Kieran Farmer is an 18-year-old kid out of the Woodlands Rugby Club, and he's he's learning behind Sam and, and Connor, and, and he's just doing such an outstanding job at such a young age that we want more Kieran Farmers in our team. We need more Kieran Farmers to make this thing a 10 a 10-year growth project. Um, so they're just some players to name a few, and then we've got to go to the academy be completely open to anyone who wants to come and watch and we'll also provide session plans and exactly what we're doing so that this is an ongoing coach education process because we need that to be successful. Um, then the actions of course, finding the locations, so we're still in the process of doing that. If you're interested, please come and see me today or, uh, or email me. Um, I think obviously creating the session plans, allocating the staff and um, providing those for the coaches. Now, and here's another part. We have a foundation for our youth too, and this is this is one of the parts that, that I'm passionate about, is working with um, the Houston Independent School District to create opportunities for those kids who may not have the, the means to be able to experience the greatest game in the world, rugby. So what we're, uh, we, we've been working with the city, and we'll continue to do so, we're trying to get, to, trying to get four to six teams to have a rugby program in their school, and then we're going to create a tournament so they can play in it, and the hopes that a year, two years, three years, whatever the time frame may be, they can then play against the local high school teams and clubs that are playing already. And, and these are kids that wouldn't be able to join your club most likely, so we're, we're trying to pre uh, create opportunities for those sort of children. And just and just quickly, I've got script here a little bit. I've spent a lot of time in Bermuda working with their rugby program, and what, what they have is called Beyond Bermuda. And it's an education program that they hold at schools. Because, so Bermuda's a, a one mile wide island that is 21 miles long, so not a very big place. And they have three games, and those games are really affecting the community. It's, it's a really bad problem in Bermuda. So what they've done is they've used rugby as a resource or an outlet for, for kids that could go into gang life to come into their, their program. They have to go there, they have to do their homework, their projects, then they're allowed to play rugby, they get, they get a feed, they get all of it. So obviously that's a long-term project, but they're the sort of changes we want to make as, as the Sabre Cats. We, we want to try and make those changes when we're able to. So that's, that's some aspirational things for me personally and for the organisation. So that's, that's where we're headed. But we've got to start small by introducing the game um, to these kids. And then, I know that was a lot of information and